We have sound! Excellent! <laughs> Hi! Sorry about that. It's been a while since I've done this, so... Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure panda or no panda. I can switch the panda off. It's, uh, it's, it's not essential. I just... He had a hat. He had a hat, and I thought I'd put it on. You know how it goes. Don't you dare. Now, I do have a bottle of whiskey with me, and I do have a glass. But we used all the normal glasses, so I've, used, I've got one of these. I got a Christmas present last year for whiskey glasses, but they're the sort of glasses, um, well, I, 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 I don't want to tell my family this because they bought it for me, and, and they are lovely, but they're glasses that you drink whiskey with something else. I think they're designed for, for like, you know, if you can have like Jack Daniels and Coke, you know, if you're a monster. So, uh, yeah, so I've got to put whiskey in it, but it's so damn large that I'm going to have to have like, I don't know, two millimeters of, of whiskey. Otherwise, I'm going to be insanely drunk. So, yeah. Massive, massive glass. And there you go. And the whiskey I've chosen today is Ardbeg. Islay Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Guaranteed 10 years old. But we've had this for quite some time, actually. It's a very, very smoky whiskey. I do like it. It's not my favourite, though. I can't remember when we bought this. I might have had this for six or seven years, so it's going to be reasonably. Chocolate pudding is nice. <laughs> right. So, this is the Christmas Q&A Patreon stream, where I get to thank all the patrons. Is my, is my panda mouth really not behaving? I feel like panda mouth not behaving. Panda mouth is a little off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Now, be honest with you, I was thinking, panda, little bit off. This is not important, and yet it will bother me. You know what? Let's forget Panda Mouth, right? Anyway, okay, so yes, what I will be doing tonight is looking at the Patron Discord channel, which is surprisingly quiet except for them talking about whips and branding irons. <laughs> okay, right, we've got our, we have got our first question from player slot available. It's a long question. Not asking for you to change anything since this is just a very niche problem I have due to my autism. Just curious and trying to narrow down the source for this. Sometime during your Richard playthrough, I stopped being able to binge watch your videos released after that point getting slight headaches after prolonged watching. I think it's related to the sound since that is the sensory input that affects me the most. Did I change my microphone around this time? No, I've had the same microphone since... Well, basically, I think it was sometime around... Fallout New Vegas? I might be wrong. I'm not 100% sure.
Hmm. If you compare my old New Vegas videos to my Outer World videos in particular during the- Oh! Outer Worlds! Outer Worlds! Um, I have got to tell you now, Outer Worlds gave me headaches. Uh, I, uh, uh, the first few episodes, but even towards the end, when I identified what it was was bothering me about Outer Worlds, a lot of that was the colour. Usually headaches like that come from colour. There is a lot of shouting in the Outer Worlds that were not present in the New Vegas videos. Um... I mean, the thing is, is of course, if 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 you're saying I'm I'm being louder, I'm being louder in the Outer Worlds videos than I was in New Vegas. That is possible. You know, it was fine during the Dragonborn chapter of Richard. Could it have been? Could it have been when I started using an ENB? Could it have been when I started using an EMB so there was more on screen? That's all I'm thinking. Maybe. Um, beyond that, I can't say. I, I'm not really a massive expert on problems triggered by audio. All I could possibly recommend is lowering the volume so that it's similar to the ones... I mean, I, I always try to... the The voice volume... I always try to get uh, peaking uh, n never outside of the yellows. So ordinarily, if I was talking like this, it would probably hit at about minus six to minus eight decibels. If I shout, it can go up. I think later on in the Richard playthrough, I began to balance the audio better so there was more game sound. It, I think if you listen to my earlier... Let's Plays, my voice was far louder than the game sound. I, I've tried to balance it more so you feel like you're there more. I don't know if that's perhaps the problem. Maybe because the game sounds louder, you need the game volume louder to hear me. I mean, I, we can, I can investigate that and see if there are problems. Okay, 61 second guy. I saw a game you might like, Light Matter. A homage to first person puzzle play tunnel vision games. Ooh, wow, that's a one hell of a thing, isn't it? Um, use lateral thinking to solve mind bending puzzles with light shadows, beams, platforms, and light matter. Step. You know what? That might be the sort of thing I could do on a, um, on a, on a stream. Definitely sounds a bit like a stream game. So I've just glanced at the Twitch chat and someone said, oh no, I've run out of alcohol. Bad timing. <laughs> I'm still drinking coffee at the moment. I'm switching in a while. Mm. Okay. Would I consider expanding the products in my merchandise store? Ooh, you are going to get me into trouble with Quarico. Yes, I, I, I absolutely, I absolutely will get on that. In fact, no, it's all Quarico's fault. I, I know what I'm saying. I'm just covering for her. Uh, it's all her fault. If it weren't for Quarico, we'd have tons more merchandise. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, but no, we will definitely, we will definitely get more. There's there's a whole new lines of products have come up, so I am going to I am going to uh, to, to to get on that. I promise. I'll just probably release some of the old um, stuff as well. There are some new ideas. I got a feeling some people want the coffee um, image as well. So let's move on. Coraco uh, going to kill me for that. It's not actually Coraco's fault. It's my fault. She's constantly reminding me. Just so you know. Um, are the children attending class or school or online? Uh, how has that affected my work situation? Well, actually, as of, I think it was, mon I think it was this Monday, but towards the end of last week as well, they did start to end up on homeschooling, online homeschooling, but school ended yesterday anyway, so it was not a big deal. 
And how it affects my work situation is not as bad as you might think. Um, the kids can be quiet when they need to be. They are, especially if they have access to the TV or the Xbox or the Nintendo or something, you know what I mean? Um, the, the place is a lot noisier when their mother is home. Her mother is a firm believer that children should be doing things. Energetic, noisy things. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a bit more of a... <laughs> but, yeah. Um, if it gets too bad, I can switch to working nights. But at the moment, Christmas is coming, so, yeah. Let's have a look. Now that I finished Red Dead Redemption 2, go for spoiler field questions. What are your thoughts on the animal AI, specifically the horses? Um, I hadn't really thought of it that much, especially regards to the horses. I'm not totally sure the horses AI is necessarily something I ever really focused on. Even though I spent a lot of time talking to the horse. I did pay attention to the other animal AI, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love Biscuit. I love the horses. The horses are so well done. Um, just the way they twitch, the way they move, the way you brush them, the, that sort of attention to detail. I sort of wish Kingdom Come Deliverance had had that level of, um, of detail when it came to the horses, being able to clean the horses. I also really like the idea that the horses can't be summoned from an infinite distance. But the animal AI is actually really good in Red Dead Redemption 2. If you just stare and watch animals interacting with each other or the environment, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, the game is amazing full stop. There are a litany of problems with it. And in fact, some of the problems are so big and so annoying, they would have destroyed a lesser game. Those of you who've been watching my Let's Play will remember episode 77 and a half. <sighs> yeah, that, that's something that would probably have had me raging a lesser game. It is, it's a testament to how good that game is that I carried on. Have I considered streaming in 1440p? It would help with a lot of games. I did stream in 1440p for a while, but it was causing people problems. A lot of people couldn't handle it, and it, 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 wasn't, it wouldn't convert 1440p into 1080p. It would only do 720. Is Twitch now better at 1440p? If, if, stream, if Twitch can now handle 1440p, yeah, no problem. I will switch to 1440p in a heartbeat. Yeah, because, yes, it would help um, a lot of games with plants and grass like Skyrim and Icarus. Oh, yeah, no, I absolutely, yeah, no, totally get that. Totally get that. Uh, 1440p was an amazing thing to, um, to move up to for Skyrim. You've never seen people streaming at 1440p. Sorry, I'm just glancing at the, um, at the Twitch comments as well. People are uh, saying they don't think so. So, I, I honestly... I can't remember if I record at 1440p, though. I think I record and upload 1440p to YouTube. So, yeah. I get it. Have Okay, what is the most disappointing game you have played on YouTube or stream that has been suggested by viewers? Might create a few enemies answering that. Uh, disappointing game suggested by viewers? Um, the first one that comes to mind is Seven Days to Die, but that's mostly because it's been a recent thing. Everyone, everyone keeps telling me it's the greatest survival game ever, and me and Che tried it, but we were really nonplussed by it. It seemed really bland and... Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, maybe we just had a bad experience, or just a bit of a boring experience. Um... Yeah, I don't. I'd say probably that then, actually. 
You were hesitant to start both Red Dead Redemption 2 and Mass Effect playthroughs, uh, as they were more directed than Skyrim. How do you feel they've worked out? Um, both pretty good, but as expected. They're not as popular as Skyrim, uh, as I was expecting. Uh, but, you know, I'm glad I did Red Dead Redemption 2 as a Let's Play. I definitely am, even though... I, I will admit, had I known it was going to be close to 200 episodes, I would have probably said no. I would have said, yeah, I can't handle that on the channel. And honestly, from, from a sheer business perspective, if I was to look at it, I'd have to say it probably doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but I'm still glad I did it because it, it's, it's such an epic game in many ways. Um... I'm very torn on it. When I, when I do a review of it, it's going to be... I'm probably going to do a couple of videos when it's finally finished. And what I will do is I will do a general review. And then I will not do my criticisms. I will say, okay, there are some criticisms, but they won't make me not recommend the game. Uh, uh, but I will do a criticism video just to separate it. And then I will do a criticism video and everyone will complain and say, you spent 10 minutes saying the game was good in your review, and then an hour and a half criticising the game. You must hate it. But I don't. I loved it. I loved the game. I've done two full playthroughs, and that game is massive. My second playthrough was a, a complete 100 percenter. So. Loved it. Really, really, really loved it. Not a question, but you did the same... Oh, right. <laughs> Play a slot available saying did the same thing as me. Ended up buying an RTX 3000 series from a scalper on Finn. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, we're terrible people. We shouldn't encourage the scalpers. The scalpers here in Norway, though, are a little better than the ones elsewhere. They they usually do something like a 5 or 10% markup. So, um... When are you really going to stop playing Back for Blood? Don't know. <laughs> Okay, for those of you that don't know the story, me and Quirico started playing Back for Blood on Recruit Difficulty. Uh, oh, let me just give a few shout-outs. Can I just give a few shout-outs on, um, on, on the Twitch? Razor Mouse, Nightshade, Squeaky Rabbit, and C. Dante Modding. Thank you for the resub. C. Dante Modding in the house, people. Nails, thank you for the resub. And Glad of War. Cheering. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Um, myself and Quadrico were playing Back for Blood on Recruit Difficulty, and we were having an okay time. And then we jumped to Veteran, and the game was ridiculous. But more importantly, the bots were appalling. Like, really bad. Really just, oh mind-numbingly just I am talking stick your mouth on the barrel of a minigun bad and no that's not an analogy that's what one of them did once I didn't tweet oh god I didn't tweet I didn't tweet believe it or not I had the tweet ready to go <laughs> I tweeted I had it ready to go I was organized, and then I forgot to press the button. Because <gasps> I'm old! So, yeah. Um, then, yeah. So, uh, it was really, 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 really bad. And we said, that's it. We can't do it until they tweak the game, or we find two other people to play with. So, we quit. For about seven hours, and then I'm like, I think I've got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. We managed to complete Act 1 and 2 on Veteran Difficulty with two bots. And we were quite proud of ourselves, to be honest. Um, and then we found two, two of my friends were playing, and they were in a similar situation. So we, we, we joined them, and we went through Act... I can't remember if we joined them before the patch. It occurred at the same time. But they also patched the game to make it less infuriating. So it, I actually think now we could probably complete the game on veteran difficulty with two bots and, and make it. 
maybe not Act 4. I haven't decided. Act 3 is tough, but I still think we could almost do it. Maybe. Um, but we now have um, two friends of mine, two old friends of mine from my Left for Dead days. And um, it's, it's like a different game with, with four actual players. So we've defeated everything up to Act Four on Veteran. We're gonna we're gonna hammer Veteran Act Four and then move on to Nightmare. So we don't know when we'll finish it. To be honest, this could be my this could be my personal guilty pleasure for quite some time. So yeah, let me have a look. What else do we have? <laughs> Because you had an extensive Western styled game on the channel in Red Dead, does that mean we will be we won't be seeing Fallout New Vegas return for a while? Um There's a bit a big part of Red Dead Redemption 2 appearing on the channel was I had that urge. I was gonna play Fallout New Vegas Frontier and then that all fell apart. Does we won't be seeing Fallout New Vegas return for a while. You won't be Fallout New Vegas returning is gonna be a bit iffy at the best of times. The save is ancient. I have managed to clean up the the mod list, and I I I'm, I haven't ruled out doing Frontier or doing something else. But honestly, I've got so many other things. I got so many other things. So I I I can't promise it. I do miss it at times. I miss Jack, but Jack did do more or less everything as well. The only thing he didn't do was the final part of the main quest, which is a bit meh. Anyway. What are my thoughts on NFT? That, oh, isn't that, oh God, aren't that the, uh, isn't that like the sort of like people own digital, I don't, I've never totally understood them. Oh, I saw a video on it. Um, what are my thoughts on them? Eh, don't really have any. I, I'd say, I'd say that's my, that's it. I don't have any. Was your second playthrough of Red Dead Redemption 2 absent the you're going to freeze to death glitch? Yes. Believe it or not, I did get the update. And I think the update came out in my first playthrough close to the end of chapter six let's just say the update made no difference to my playthrough right really really by the time you notice or even if you if you notice that not being there it's it was way too late oh and i did not use um what was the this the, the, they they started using a new form of anti-aliasing which is far superior and um, it removes a lot of the blurring and some of the ghosting you get, and it looks phenomenal. I didn't use that either, and there were two reasons for that, even though I could have, I could have for the last several episodes. One, I just felt like I'd played the entire game with a certain look and feel, that slightly blurred look, um, especially with the... You know, it, it had that weird ghosting when you turned, but that was the style of the entire playthrough. And I just thought, changing the style, not really. Um, even though there were there was definitely one good place I could have changed the style um, and almost made it feel deliberate. But the second reason was quite simple. There was lighting issues when I used that. Uh, if I stood in a forest and I turned around, lights came on and off in odd ways so i just decided not to so yeah have i started have i what have i watched starfield mini teasers concept art reveals no um will i play out on release yes i generally avoid a lot of that sort of stuff partly because i just don't have time i'm absolutely run off my feet or stood off my feet at the moment because I'm still I'm still standing. I am still standing to do most of my work now. But I generally speaking, I like to avoid a lot of the pre-hype stuff so that I can go in 
pretty, without, with, with less expectations. I think that's one of the reasons I enjoyed Cyberpunk 2077 when everyone else was melting down. Because I just went in expecting The Witcher 3 in, in Night City. More, you know what I mean? I was expecting a very similar game to Witcher 3, only a different theme, and I kind of got that. Everyone else had been following the, the videos and the dev stuff and their Twitter, and they were expecting something else. And, uh, you know, so I think sometimes it just works in my favor to not have a set of expectations built upon what they present. I'm generally... I'm sort of, I'm a bit more old school Bethesda in this regard. I like the fact that Bethesda used to just basically reveal everything once it was done. I'm not, not keen on this new show it as you go. Mm. Sorry, I'm drink, still drinking. Uh, let me have a look here. What's coming up after the holidays? Oh, okay, right. New timetable. Well, it's not a new timetable. Mass Effect has ended. Something else will be replacing it on Saturday. And we'll be taking its slot. Spoiler alert. It rhymes with Byrim. No more, no more clues. Um, so that will that will that will be taking that slot. Everyone's probably thinking, when does Mass Effect? Do come back. That's going to replace Red Dead Redemption 2 when it goes on a break. And I've decided it's going to go on a break in about five or six weeks. Earlier than I originally planned, actually. But that's just because of the way everything's worked out. So, I... Yeah, basically, there's, there's, I, there's a good point for a break. Mass Effect 2 will replace that, and then Red Dead Redemption 2 will come back at the end of chapter 10 of this Byrim game. Um, so it won't be that long. There won't be big breaks. I don't think. I don't think. Um, and then it just it's going to alternate like that until I've got Mass Effect 2 and 3 out of the way. Um, as to what will what will come after chapter 10, I, I don't actually know at the moment. I mean, I, I might start straight in on chapter 11 if I have some inspiration as to what the hell I want to do for chapter 11. Um, but of course, we are going to be heading into sort of like the latter, the, the, you know, after summer. And we're expecting Starfield. We're expecting Starfield. I'm also wondering when Cyberpunk gets its DLC because I am planning a second playthrough of Cyberpunk with its DLC, and with mods, because I've been seeing some really good mods come out. I've been seeing some really good mods, like uh, bringing back the trains, the transit system. So, yeah. That's uh, probably going to take us up to God knows when. I'm still looking out for Bloodlines 2, but I don't have that much hope now, and I can't even remember what else is coming out. There might be a ton of other stuff. Is there going to be a Starfield Mod Sanctuary vault? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Assuming Starfield is, in fact, Skyrim in space, as I have been hoping for, for about what? When did we hear about Starfield? Six or seven years, and I've been saying I want Skyrim in space, and I was so happy to hear... Todd Howard used those exact words. Um, I've already had my lawyers get in contact with Bethesda and uh, tell them that I'm, I'm demanding some sort of settlement for stealing my term. <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess he probably has called it Skyrim in space way before me. But allow me my little conceits. So, yeah. There will be modding videos. What they will be called, I do not know. Don't know. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Hope Peaches, do you intend playing a modded Mass Effect after you finish the Legend experience? I don't think so, no. I, I, Mass Effect is really a... The only real reason for replaying Mass Effect um, is to see perhaps some other outcomes. And I've seen them all. I've seen them all. Oh, well, in Mass Effect 2 and 3, it's, it's actually a lot of fun to play every single class. 
But again, played them all. Played every single class in Mass Effect 2 and 3. So it's kind of, you know, played, played very, very um, Paragon-y. Very, very renegade-y. Bit of a mix. Played all sorts of different things. Romanced everyone before everyone asks. Oh, no. Romanced everyone male Shep can romance. I've only done... I've done two playthroughs. Uh, one of Mass Effect 2 and one of Mass Effect 3 as Fem Shep, but I did not romance anyone. So, romance, I never romanced anyone. Yeah, apparently so. Apparently, apparently I've never rom romanced anyone in any of the games I play. But there you go. Did my therapy go all right? Yes, it did. The good news is, the good news is, I do not have a herniated disc. I have a micro tear on the disc that could have been bad, but it wasn't, and it will heal, and all I have to do is stop doing stupid things. So I'm probably in a lot of trouble. Uh, <laughs> oh, Zervan here. That, whoa, 10,000 bit cheer. Thank you very much. You could not come up with a question for the stream, sadly. Well, thank you very much anyway. Um, so yeah, anyway, so my therapy is going really well. Um, you know, just still standing though, still avoiding sitting for long periods. Here we go. God of Jesus. You're stranded on a desert island after a cargo plane went down. You're the only survivor. You have an endless supply of bread, but you also pick one kind of cheese to put on the bread. It appears magically swoosh. Vegan or plastic cheese. Pick your poison. Uh, I'd never tried vegan cheese. I know Che hates it with an absolute passion. But it'd have to be vegan, I suppose, because plastic is plastic. I'd just probably eat the bread if the vegan cheese is as bad as Che made out. Um, oh, I read C. Dante's a bit early, didn't I? Um, am I planning to put most of my popular mods to Starfield? Oh, right, like Immersive Hood. Um, I think we have to see what the HUD's going to be and what technology it's on. Because the problem is, is it, it, like, I, I can't remember how to do... God, it was scale form, wasn't it? Which is flash. And the scripting was called active. What was the script called? What was the scripting engine called for the flash, for, for scale form? It was... <gasps> See, I can't remember what... It... Ah, action script. See, I can't remember what it's called, let alone how the hell to do it. So it'd be a big learning process. So I was really hoping they would have had a more... Dynamic heads up display by then. Um, but maybe, maybe. It depends how bad the heads up display is. Let's just say there's a, there's a decent chance. Uh, but then I'm probably, assuming they use the same engine that they used in Skyrim. And that's a big assumption because Skyrim was a radically different engine to Fallout New Vegas, for example, Fallout 3. They used vastly different user interface technology so yeah i to be honest with you i i think what i would be doing um is waiting for or the starfield script extender what's that going to be sfussy sfussy or stussy what do you think stse or sfse it's gonna be sfse isn't it sfussy sfussy uh, uh, once we get Sifsi out, I'll possibly look into it. I don't think I'm going to be going... Like, when, when Skyrim first came out, I ended up buying the bloody... Um, the whatever the bloody... I can't even remember what the Flash program was called that you compiled the, the damned things in and you... God, it was awful. It was a pain in the backside. It took ages to get that working. Uh, I won't be doing that again because it was way too time-consuming and annoying. Uh, but like once once the script extender came out for Skyrim, it was a lot easier. Same with Fallout uh, 4. It was a lot easier to engage with the heads-up display after that. I think for Fallout 4, actually, it was the... Wasn't that a Fallout 4 user interface mod? There was actually a mod, like like it's used, it, it, it's used by a lot of user interface mods. I ended up using that. So if something like that comes out, then yes. 
Hood Framework by Reg2K. That was it. Yes, Hood Framework by Reg2K. If something like that comes out for Starfield, yes. But I'm probably going to be doing a lot less of... I'm going to be relying on people who are way better at modding, way smarter than me, to do those things. And then I'll just sort of like, if the heads-up display is absolutely annoying, I'll probably do something. If someone else hasn't done it by then, because if you remember Witcher 3, I started working on an immersive hood for Witcher 3, and then someone else came up with Friendly Hood, and it was brilliant. Did everything I needed and more. So I was like, hey, if someone else wants to do it, you do it. So we'll have to see. All right, let's have a look. Roughly how many mods are you running on Skyrim at the moment? Do I find it more stable with loads of mods than Fallout 3 or Fallout of Vegas? I'm running quite a lot of mods on Skyrim. Some people would go, oh, you're barely using any mods at all, because there is a bit of snobbery in the mod community on how many mods you can get. But I've got quite a lot of mods. Um, and some of them are really quite old. I've probably got one of the most old load orders you could possibly have. Is it more stable with loads of mods than Fallout 3 and Fallout in Vegas? Yeah, hands down. I mean, Fallout New Vegas is actually a lot more stable now because, because the modding community is still producing so many really, really good mods. Um, like now I can, I can install a bunch of mods. Because here's the thing, I can run Fallout New Vegas on my current rig, which is absolutely ridiculous, and get like 70 frames a second in Good Springs, vanilla. And I'm like, what the hell? I then install a bunch of mods that fix a bunch of stuff, and I'm getting rock-solid 120 frames a second. <laughs> so, yeah. But still, Skyrim Special Edition. Not, not Skyrim Legendary Edition thing, but Skyrim Special Edition is ridiculously stable for me. Okay, I think this question is from all the Skyrim, Skyrim followers, says Dalitus Drain. When Skyrim is done on your channel, will we ever see the Fable DNB really? I keep meaning now sponsored by Zervanir. <laughs> Um, I suppose I could upload it. I just, I've never been happy with it because I always find somewhere where I go in and go, gee, that's horrible. Um, so it's not really a well-tested EMB. I can, I can upload it for people, I suppose. You know, yeah, I guess. It's not that good, really. It's very, very, it's very, very basic. It's quite, people look at it and probably think, oh, well, that's going to be a lightweight EMB. It's not. I'm using some of the ENBs very, very performance-consuming options. What I'm not running are a ton of things that change, you know, lo add loads of bloom or make it brightly coloured or anything like that. I've not changed the look and feel of Skyrim. I've just, I've made the lights better, the shadows better. I've added particle lights, that sort of thing. But I, I can definitely upload it if people really want it. I'm just going to end up putting a disclaimer on it saying, hey, don't blame me if you find somewhere that looks like complete backside chasing the echoes and amazing adventures of derek will continue once you're back here is it again okay yes yes absolutely i am actually let's just say i'm good enough now had i not been doing this today and it not been christmas i probably would have been doing derek today probably i mean it, I, if i hadn't been doing this i'd be in there decorating the tree or something with my with my family but yeah derek is going to return absolutely have I considered getting a haptic vest or equivalent? Yes. <laughs> Ve I mean, they're bloody expensive. They're like $500. But I, I, I'm looking at it and I'm reading people's reviews and they're saying, Skyrim is awesome. The, apparently you can jump in the water and you can feel the water press on your chest. So I'm like, yeah. I just, I don't know how much um, effect you, the viewer, are going to feel from it. Yeah, maybe you'll just hear me. Because for those of you who don't know, the haptic vests basically have a lot of um, activators in the vest. And if you get hit, you'll feel something in that direction. Like if you're using a, an Xbox controller and, um, you know, you feel it vibrate. And, or, and, and when, you, when you're playing driving games, you can feel sort of shuddering and shaking and it gives you some feedback. And even though it's completely unrealistic, for some reason, your brain makes it feel realistic. Well, you get that in the controllers with VR. But this would be with the vest. Now, there are things for your face as well. Who we got? Ginger Jotun, thank you for the resub. And Deaf Love, thank you for the resub. So, yeah, there's, there's things for your hands, your legs, 
and sorry, your arms, your legs and your face. And I'm being told that the, the things on your hands and your feet are OK. They're not bad. Uh, but the face one apparently is very disturbing. I mean, it's really good, apparently. But like you get hit in the head. Apparently, it's very unpleasant. And you could argue, yes, that's the whole point. But people are sort of saying, yeah, it's interesting, but I'd rather play without it. So I, I think what I will do, I think what I will do is I will get the haptic vest at some point for Skyrim because it does look good. <laughs> what I really want to do is get tracking things for the hand and say the knees or something. And 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 so I could do full body movement in Skyrim, but it's not possible. The body mod I use doesn't won't track. It won't track the VR stuff, unfortunately. Cause that would be awesome. Could you imagine if I could get trackers for my um well what I'd probably do is put trackers on my uh probably on my feet. And maybe my hips. <laughs> With Derek. Ah! Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Probably get thrown off Twitch, but it would be worth it. Um, who's that? Any Dan. Thank you very much for the resub. See ya. Kiri asks, does it feel odd to romance companions in games when you're married in a partnership in real life? Nope. Um... <laughs> I find that gameplay aspect of RPGs is completely unappealing to me now that you're that you're married, and I'm wondering if it's like that for me. Oh, no, it never. No, the thing is, is I don't mind the relationship um, things in most games, depending on how they're done. If they're interesting, um, like the Pan Am romance in Cyberpunk, that was okay. That was pretty pretty well done. That was pretty well done. It felt it felt reasonable. Um, the Witcher ones feel really good. The romance with Shani. Those those romances, I feel, really do do a good job of it. But like Mass Effect, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're awful. They're absolutely awful. Not a fan of Bioware's romances at all. So... They just and I don't feel like they add anything to the story. I've done them all, as I said, all the the male ones, and I'm just I'm not. They're just too uh, cartoonish. Don't diss Tally. Tally's still my favourite. The one character I always wanted to romance, you can't romance. It's a Mass Effect 2 character. Um, Yasari Justice, Justica. Can't remember her name. She was awesome. Um, but yeah. Samara could be. Mother of multiples. Chasing them down. Really? Yeah. She was badass. That was a woman who knew how to make an entrance. That was a woman who knew how to make an entrance. She was one of the best entrances for a follower in the Mass Effect series, in my opinion. Who the bar? What the f <sighs> oh, Okay, yes, I did. Sorry. Yes, Zephyr. <laughs> yeah, I let my guard down. Yes. Thank you very much. Honestly, I wasn't hinting. I was not hinting. Oh. Two thousand dollars. Okay, so now I can get the V. I'm not getting the VR upgrade. Okay, fine. I will order the haptic vest and I will order the trackers. The trackers. The Vive body trackers, though, unfortunately, can't, I can't work with Skyrim. Do I need hints? You don't, but I still feel bad. I feel bad. Like... <laughs> right, okay. The, 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 the Vive trackers, the Vive trackers, I don't think um, I can use the body mod I'm using in Skyrim, which is an absolute shame. It was an absolute shame as soon as I saw them.
I have to do a tech video or stream for the haptic vest. I will. I, right. I will order. I will definitely. I will order the haptic vest and the, the vibe trackers. And I will give you all a report on how awesome it is. Again, it will it will have to be in another game than Skyrim for the for the trackers. Although the the haptic vest I will be using then in Skyrim. Oh dear! Thank you very much. You don't think you see tip alarms? Did you not see tip alarms? Really? Did you not? I'm just, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to do a test. Give me a second. Okay. But we got the technical issues out of the way. You've now got sound. You guys did not have sound. I got sound. All right. Okay. Let's go back to the questions. Um, C. Dante, you told me about the action script and HUD framework. Thank you very much. Uh, from Pope Peaches. From Quad this is via Quadrico. Do you play traditional dice-driven RPGs, and do you have any tips on how the hell to manage get a regular group of mature adults that can commit to a regular session? No. Wish I did. Here's what I'll tell you: one of the best groups I ever did game master for were a bunch of people who predominantly had never played role-playing games before. <laughs> I got, I got to do that. Give me a second. Give me a second. Thank you. No more. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Look at that. I am a professional streamer. Oh, yeah. <gasps> if I got, like, the body tracking... Oh, is there a, is there a VTuber program that will do full body tracking if I, get, if I get the body tracking things on the wrists and feet and things? <laughs> probably. I should probably stop right now because I'm going to embarrass myself and end up in hospital, probably. Uh, okay, what was I saying? Right. Oh, yeah, right. So, um, they were they were a bunch of people who, they were friends of mine for, in a completely different environment. None of them were really what you would call fantasy nerd types. And, you know, none of them were computer gamers. Oh, well, no, a couple of them were. A couple of them were computer gamers as well. But um, I dragged them into a game of, I think it was Rollmaster, and we had such a good time. Such a good time. Another one that I did, and I did have another group that was really good, actually. I ran a Space Master Cyberpunk game for them. They were actually good as well, but that was family and friends of family. Uh, but they were hardcore. They were hardcore um, tabletop RPGs, actually. So I've had, I've had mixes. I've had mixes. Good, good groups with tabletop RPGs and good groups without. I think, I think the trick to it is finding a bunch of people who don't hate each other's guts, quite enjoy hanging around with each other once a week around a table and maybe having a few drinks. And if you're the game master, just make sure they understand you're in charge. What I mean, that's the, the main thing in tabletop RPGs is just make sure you don't have a rule junkie. Or if you've got a rule junkie in, in, in your group, break him. Break him and break him hard. Okay? Just, if you've got that sort of person to go, well, I'm sorry, I, 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 if, if you check page 89 of the Dungeon Master's Guide, I, I think you'll find that uh, uh, 17 uh, for, for this armor class uh, indicates uh, I should have hit. Uh, and your response is, ooh, right, your weapon explodes and kills you. <laughs> right, break them. Break them a lot. Um, you, you've got to get the group understanding that the rules are guidelines for you to tell the story and that sometimes you are, you know, <laughs> sometimes something's going to happen regardless of what you roll or, or you know, just get, get them out of the habit of, of, of thinking of this as a numbers game. Those, that's when you have the best experience because then they focus more on the, um, the story, the experience. Uh, <laughs> and it's fine. And it is fine. It is fine to know the rules really well, especially if you're the game master. Um, but rule number one, I remember when I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons back in the days, rule number one was the dungeon master 
um, is is absolute. His his word is absolute. That's rule number one. It overrides every other one. I I, don't, I hope you don't mind, but it, I'm getting I'm going to get in the Christmas cheer now. So don't play D and D three point five. I haven't played D and D since. Oh God, I don't know when it was. Was it second edition? Yeah, second edition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My um. My brother-in-law used to call Dungeons and Dragons D and Fluff. <laughs> so. Oh, we are worse. Hmm. <sighs> right. Okay, so let's go. What else? Not a question, but wanted to thank you for your advanced recon mod for New Vegas and your predator vision for Skyrim. Two of your favorite mods of all time. Well, thank you very much. Gotta be honest, I sort of miss my advanced recon days. Oh, it's when I was learning how to mod and getting into every aspect of it. Spent so many hours. But I, I, if I didn't spend at least three to 4,000 hours on that mod, I'd, I'd, I'd be dead surprised. Dallas Drain. Do I think game development technology has reached a plateau, or do you feel an increase or de or do you feel an increase or decrease of it? Personally, I feel the last two years have been the years of failed remastered. Um, neither. I think I think whenever we think we're at the peak of gaming, gaming does some more things, but I, you know, it, it takes it to another layer level. Is that alcohol kicking in already? Is it is it is it super absorbed through my tongue into my brain? Um, I I I warn against getting into this feeling of gaming was always better in the old days or that gaming is doomed sort of thing. What tends to happen is some games are going to disappoint you, and if and if one of those games or two of those games happens to have been released recently, you're probably going to be a bit in a bit of a negative mood, and then a couple of games will come out that you absolutely love and you'll suddenly be back in the oh my god gaming is back again kind of mood and it's it's more like that but overall if you actually look at the tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of games out there there's just better and better games coming out all the time there's so much to play but it's i mean it's okay to be disappointed by things i mean if you were one of these people who was looking forward to cyberpunk 2077 and you thought this was going to be the best game ever, but you had a bunch of expectations that were not met. It's perfectly reasonable to be feeling down about it. It is. But d don't, don't let yourself think that means gaming has gone. It just means cyberpunk fluffed up. You know, CD Projekt Red didn't do as good a job as you were hoping. Some other company probably did and you weren't paying attention. This is what I would, that's what I'm saying. What is a game that you wish got a remaster? I don't know, really. Hmm. I mean... Knights of the Old Republic's getting a remaster, right? That's one I've always kind of wanted. I'd like to play Fallout 3 on a remaster, Fallout New Vegas, Oblivion, etc. But they are sort of coming out, so. Oh, what else on a remaster? What game you wish got a remaster? I don't... I mean, I'm not... I can play old games, me, and, and it doesn't bother me too much. Jedi Knight. Oh, which was the one? Jedi Academy. I like some of those. They they were kind of cool. I don't know. I, honestly, it's, it's a bad question for me because I'm quite happy playing old games anyway, I think. Now that some time has passed, do you still think you'll do another Cyberpunk Let's Play? Well, okay, look. Yes. I just don't know what character I want to do. There's going to be DLC. Assuming there's DLC, I definitely want to do a new Let's Play. I've still not played. There are two things I've not played. I've not played a female V. I'm saving that. I'm saving my second playthrough to be a female V, right? Um, so I do want to do that. And I've not done the corpo background. I've not done it. I've deliberately avoided the corpo background. 
So all the corpo story, that type of thing. So I, I, I've got some undiscovered stuff, but I've been um and ah in backwards and forwards. I kind of want to do a net runner build. I kind of want to do a net runner build, but there's a little side of me, and I keep talking to Quarico about this. I kind of want to do a mono wire build. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I've just got maybe maybe I've got some kinky fetish issues. I just didn't realize. I want to play a play a woman who uses a whip. Um, I I just you know who knows. Um, I did some. You see, the thing is, is I did some mono wire testing uh, quite a while ago, and it's absolutely one of the most devastating weapons in the game, and it's so underappreciated because people just do not understand it at all and so there was a side of me wanted to do a playthrough just to show how brutally brutally incredible that weapon is um the problem is the build for that is very similar to my last playthrough so whilst i could possibly do a slightly more technically minded or i could do a net runner with good body skills and good cool skills so it'd be at the same time, to really get the best out of a mono wire build, you probably want something like the time dilation thing rather than net running. So it's kind of like I've done that in spite of the fact that I think it would be a very cool character. I've sort of done that. And I think I'd be better off doing a tech net runner character. Just, just so it was different. Just so it was different enough that, you know, you, you, you feel it's very different to my male V. So yeah, uh, but yes, I, I do I do think I will probably want to give it uh, another try. Let's have a look. So when a new video about your workplace set up? Oh God, first of all, when something changes. And second of all, once I've cleaned the place. The place is an absolute tip at the moment. Really is. Sort of waiting for all sorts of things to do. I need to clean the place like badly. Because my back being out, it's not been easy. So, I, yeah. This is a stupid question, but will we see you and Che in Sons of the Forest next June? Yes. <laughs> that was an easy one. Um, Dalatest Drain forwarded. Pope Pages, do you ever intend to create channel point redemptions? When somebody explains to me what they are, I might. <laughs> okay. Any plans for shorter games like when you played Edith Finch, Stanley Parable, Soma? Yeah, I mean, yeah, when I, when I find ones I want to play or I can squeeze in. I still wait to do Plague Tale, even though I'd never got round to that. And yeah, there's, there's, there's many of them, but we're, we're, we're back in the territory of, oh my God, I need... I mean, here's the thing. One of the questions I got asked on the video when I announced this was... Uh, would you consider doing another Kingdom Come Deliverance playthrough? And I can't. I'd love to. I would love to. I've even got a really good idea for a character. One, one that avoids the main quest. <laughs> Doesn't learn how to fight, basically. At least for quite a while. See how far I can get. But it's, it's just way too much of a commitment for the channel. Just there's too much to do. So, yeah. Or a game like Tyranny. What's isn't Tyranny a sort of strategy type? No. I mean maybe. But that's more of that's more of a stream kind of thing. Hey, look at this. Look at this. I've run out I've run out of patron questions. Nice. Tyranny is a CRPG. C computer RPG. This is an RPG. Okay. Is it what like top down like Divinity Original Sin? Okay, again, more of a stream game, I think. I think that's more of a stream game. Hmm. When I drink whiskey, the panda does this weird thing, like it's chasing your glass. Mm. <laughs> Tyranny is absolutely incredible. Yeah, and then someone mentioned Disco Elysium as well. You plan a break between Mass Effect 1 and 2. Yes, 
Um, I, I finished Mass Effect 1 a while ago, a few weeks ago. I haven't started playing Mass Effect 2 yet because I really did feel like I wanted to get Chapter 10 of Skyrim started. Um, so, yeah. Basically, we've got about... There's, there's, um, there's about five weeks until Red Dead Redemption 2 goes on a break. I will start playing Mass Effect 2 almost certainly in the next three or four weeks so that it can replace that. That's, that's my current plan. That is my current plan. But again, Disco Elysium, back to this is the Twitch chat. Disco Elysium, she's like, when, when am I going to get time for it? When am I going to get time for it? I mean, there's, 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 you know, plenty of games I could play maybe off stream and off camera, so to speak, but games to stick into the actual timetable. Oof. I just, I can't see it at the moment. For someone who plays all the survival horror games, I'm surprised Gopher hasn't played any Resident Evils. Well, Resident Evil wasn't out on PC, was it, when I was first playing it? Oh, Zerminir again! If I want a short game, I should make a playthrough of Superliminal. Yeah, you did mention that. I've got some, I, I've got, I haven't checked it out. I'll be honest, I've not checked it out yet. Um, I should give it a check. I should definitely give it a check. If it, one, one, one and a half to two hours. Yeah. I will definitely. Probably a stream game then. That doesn't sound very Let's Play-ish. Disco Elysium doesn't fit. Yeah, it's not that Disco Elysium doesn't fit streaming. I just don't think it fits my main channel, my, my video channel, um, I think. Yeah, Silver Dawn's linked it. Group therapy. <laughs> what? Uh, it's a first-person puzzle game based on forced perspective and optical illusions. So it's a puzzle game. Yeah, I've got a feeling that's a stream game, right? That's a good stream game. We can give that a try. We can definitely give that a try. Okay, what if I miss? What if I miss? Snake Doctor. Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 are all mastered on PC, if you weren't aware. Right, but, you know, people ask why I haven't played them. They weren't there originally, right? So... That's basically why, and the reason I haven't played anything since, any of them since, is that I just haven't got time. Same as everything else, really. Um, yeah, let me have it. Let me see what I've done. Uh, I second the Disco Elysium recommendation. Yeah, a lot of people have. How many episodes will Red Dead Redemption Two be? I, do you want spoilers? I, I, less than two hundred, but not much less than two hundred. Let's put it that way. Yeah, is that good enough? It's sort of like, you know, in that ballpark. More than 175, less than 200. There you go. Um, You seem to connect with dogs in games. Do I have dogs at home? Nope. I'm not really a pet person. Don't have time. Patience. Probably forget to feed the thing. Uh... Yeah. Can't stand dog hairs. Can't stand cat hairs. Cats adore me, which annoys the snot out of me. They do, I don't know what it is. I mean, dogs love me as well. My kids will be like, my, oh, it's a doggy. My kids love pets. They love pets. And they, every time we walk past them, one has got a dog or a cat. Kids are like, oh, I want a pet. I want to pet the kid. I want to pet the, 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 the cat. I want to pet the dog. The dog or the cat or whatever it is immediately just comes straight over to me and starts trying to play with me and I'm glaring at it like, like play with the kids. Play with the damned kids. Leave me alone. But for some reason they're always coming at me. Cats especially. Um so but it's not that I hate pets really. It's just it's it's more a matter of like like with dogs, I don't like I don't like dogs when they lick you. Do not like being licked by a dog, by any animal, to be honest. Or people, really, really. There's a select few people I will put on an exclusive list that are allowed to do that. Yeah? Generally speaking, apart from that, no thank you. Not interested. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um. Moving on. Yeah, well, there you go. 
Guys brought dogs into it. But it is, again, like, when you're in a computer game, you don't have to worry about that, right? It's not, it's not my face that's getting licked, it's Arthur's face. What do I care? <laughs> I can, I can, I can live vicariously through him. I don't know, it just, for some reason, I just saw Arthur as a dog person. I think he had a dog. I think he had a dog. But I just saw him as a dog person. Um, and a horse person. But I've always been... I mean, you know me and, like, like it's just... I like to connect to something in the game. And in Kingdom Come Deliverance, it was Pebbles. In um, Red Dead Redemption 2, it's Biscuit, you know. I'm surprised we haven't had people demanding I replace Biscuit. God, I was getting so, so many demands to replace pebbles, and I never did. Can you adopt a dog in Red Dead Redemption 2? Unfortunately not. It's a shame. Have I, right, here we go. Uh, let's go back to the patron comments. Have you planned any continuum to Leonard after chapter 10. I've not planned it, but there's a lot of content I've not done. I'm just not totally sure how I can do some of it. I've got some ideas of, there, like there's some content that would be almost impossible for Leonard, but might be possible with mods. Most of you who've watched the series will probably be able to figure that one out. Um, the, there's the main story as well, but I, I feel like the main story I'd wait a little while on if I was ever going to do it. Um, but then there's modded content. There is modded content. Um, there's uh, one about the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. Of, oh, God. Yeah, wasn't it the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal? And there's a few other ones, and they're quite short. And with Leonard being the level he is, he'd probably nuke through them. And I've thought about Beyond Skyrim, Bruma, visiting that again. I semi-wish, I semi-wish I'd installed Moonpath to Elsewhere for the Leonard playthrough. I do. <laughs> but it's too late now. Falscar, maybe, although I, 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 th I think that's a bit of a one-off. Mm. <sighs> so, yeah. Maybe. It's vague plans. Very, 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 very vague plans. Question, did you know you can support Gopher by subscribing on Twitch, Patreon, or simply joining the <laughs> That is... <laughs> Sips coffee from a Gopher merch mug. That is not a question, Dallas Estrain. Well, I suppose it is, technically, but... You... <laughs> well done. Speaking of merch, anything new in the works? I, um, I've had demands for all sorts of things. Apparently I said something in Red Dead Redemption 2 about coffee. I can't remember where it was. Somebody actually asked me to make coffee merch. But I'd, I'd already, oddly enough, I'd already ordered some coffee-themed stuff just because it was constantly a thing in the stream, and I, I got it for emotes. Um, there will be new merchandise. Quartico has plans. There you go. Yes is the answer. Any plans to do anything with the YouTube membership perks or options for the channel? I do, ooh, I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. Yeah. I mean, it is weird, actually, because, like, the, the, the patrons, the subscribers, and the um, YouTube members are all supporting me. me. Um, and obviously all the people donating, people, generous people, very generous people like Namor and Zervener. Um, and they're, they're, it's, it's all split up in lots of different places. So it's, it's kind of difficult to manage all this. What things can I do with the YouTube perks? What could I do that wouldn't annoy everyone else, I think? is the, I mean, here's the thing. Believe it or not, somebody got bent out of shape about me doing this stream where I was going to answer questions from the patrons. Somebody got bent out of shape with it and, and basically said it was against the Christmas spirit because I was paywalling. I was paywalling content. I mean, once a year, I, 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 I field questions from the patrons and that. So there's, a, you know, I mean... Leonard had amnesia and woke up as a naked pirate in a foreign land. Oh, you're thinking of how I would get to Falskar. Yeah, no, it, with, 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 it would be more a matter of 
Would would Falscar add anything to Little Leonard's story? Is there any reason you, you know? I was because I think Beyond Skyrim was sort of open enough that I could have a bit of fun just playing around. I don't know. Worm's Tooth is one. Worm's Tooth is definitely one. Have I read any interesting books lately? No. Helgen Reborn for Leonard. Helgen Reborn for, would not work for Leonard for one reason. There is a section of that quest that involves becoming a pit fighter. And let's face it, I ain't gonna happen. I need to mod the mod. So, Worm's Tooth, yeah, that might be an option. You saw that episode today. I said everyone should sell coffee. No, but but I'm guessing there's a lot of coffee-related things. No, apparently I said something along the lines of I'm afraid I have something more important to do uh, than than talk to you, and that thing is coffee or something. I'd like it was horrible. It was whenever someone says I want it on a T-shirt, it's something horrible. I said something horrible about coffee being more important than people. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I imagine Leonard will never be doing the Companions quest. Um, the thing is, there are some reasons why Leonard might actually do that. There is, of course, a small problem with that quest line that would be a major nope for Leonard. However, there might be mods that let me get around that. That is one of the big problems. There are certain things where I have to use a bit of uh, finagling to get Leonard to do things. So, yeah. Any plans to travel internationally in the future post-COVID? <laughs> Once COVID's gone, maybe. I'm gonna visit family. I want to I wanna go to Legoland in Denmark. It's been years since we've been. Family holidays, really suffering. Wish there was a way to make Indigo be the companion. You just let the player tag along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that would have been one option, actually. Yeah. Oh, dear. Werewolves don't wear pants. That's a huge problem. That's one of the huge problems. That's one of the huge problems. Think about how you become a werewolf in that particular quest line. Think about that. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Apocalypsis? I have no idea what that is, I'm sorry. Any chance of doing an MMO? Uh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, my days of MMOs, done, gone. Just, it's, it's too time-consuming. It is way too time-consuming. I'd end up playing ten times more than I ended up streaming. Because you can't stream every single damned minute of a game like that. And thus, you know, but you end up losing your life to it. Unless I did just stream every minute and that would become my channel. Oh, dear. I seem to remember looking to change your wireless headphones. Did you find anything yet? No, I'm afraid not. No, unfortunately. Still using the 180s. RS 180s. And, uh, not found anything better. I've been looking. I've looked. I have looked. I cannot find anything that is wireless and open can. Apparently the Sennheiser RS-195s fit the bill, but I can never find them anywhere. So, God knows. Still looking, still looking. Would I consider putting a few mod tutorial videos for Skyrim? Yeah, but not, not for the sake of it. Like, I, I don't just do mod tutorials for the sake of it. I see something and I think, yeah, we need mod tutorials. There is the collections coming out soon, and I will be doing some videos about that. I will be doing some videos about collections. I'm even going to release a couple of New Vegas collections myself. I do not know if I'm allowed to talk about that. It's, it's now an open alpha. 
I'm probably going to get told off by uh, someone on the Nexus staff. Stop talking about it! <laughs> um, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. But yeah, so. Sony XM4 wireless headphones. I don't know, I'd have to look. Are they, are they, are they open cam? They would have to be open cam, wireless, and jacked. No, it can't be. It can't be um, USB or anything like that. It's got to be jacked. Got to be able to plug into my mixer. Preferably three point five. They're closed back. Nope. Closed back. Not. 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 Not an option. I could get. I could get RS one eighty fives. Is it or one seventy fives? Which is similar to this, but closed. But no, nope, this the the open back is the critical thing. So, Skyrim collections equals Minecraft mod packs. I don't think so, but I don't really know much about Minecraft mod packs. I don't really know much about them. Aren't the mod packs in Minecraft actually packs of mods packed together? Actually, you download a pack of mods because I think it is. The Skyrim, the collections, the Nexus collections is like a terribly named thing. They should have called them lists. They should have called them mod lists. Because that's all they are. It's just a list of mods that you download from Nexus. And it includes a bunch of information as to where those mods are. And also a bunch of instructions on how you... To tell you what you could think of it as. Collections are more like recipes. They're just like recipes for a cake. And they have a list of ingredients and a list of instructions of what to do with those ingredients. And depending on whether or not you are a premium member or a free member, Vortex will do some of the work for you. So for example, if you're a free if you're a if you're a, a free member, uh it will give you the ingredients list and it will open up the web page for the mod and allow you to download the mod at one click of one button. So let's say there's 10 mods on your list. It will open up 10 pages and you click the download button. It goes straight to the download button. It's next to impossible to get wrong unless you have been hit in the head recently by a large object. Uh, once you've done that, Vortex then bakes the cake installs it for you. If you're a premium member, it will actually download all of the things for you. It'll go and get the bloody ingredients and then install it. It's so damned easy, it's ridiculous. Um, I think Collections is just a terrible name and it gave everyone the idea that it was, a, it was a pack of mods all jammed and it's not. It is basically a list of mods and a bunch of instructions on how Vortex can install them. Yeah. Really is that. Um, okay, so let me re go back to the go back to the patrons. We're not going to be going on for much longer, so let's go back to the patrons. Um, why is open back important? Ah, okay. Open back headphones are not right. Closed headphones are easier to describe. Basically, the 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 the, the can that goes over your ear is closed at the back, so air doesn't get in and out. Sound also tends not to get in and out. What this actually does is it gives you more of an internal voice sound or an internal sound. So, for example, if I put my hands over the sides of my headphones now, it changes the way my voice sounds. I, I suddenly lose any room sound. I get at none of the room ambience. and I get this weird closed feeling. This, it, 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 what I call the headphones experience. If you put closed headphones on, you feel like you've got headphones. It does not feel like you're listening to speakers. This makes it so that the sound does not bleed out of the headphones. Um, it also makes the, the, it so that sound doesn't bleed into the headphones. So you can't hear the real world as well. The real world can't hear you as well. But there is a weird sound with headphones. There's a very distinct difference between headphones and listening to, say, good speakers. Open headphones have more of an open grill at the back. They let air in. They let sound in and out. And so what you get 
is it feels more like you're listening to very good quality speakers in your room. And the sound is way more natural. It's, it's, again, it sounds more like the sound is coming from the outside rather than inside your head. It's just got a completely different feel. And if you can use open back headphones, if you don't have restrictions, I would say genuinely, they sound better. They just do. If you're in a silent room with very neutral sound acoustics or, you know, going on, and you're listening with open back headphones, God, the sound is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Um, it also has the advantage of, if someone comes in right now, I can turn and start talking to them. And as long as there's no sound playing in the headphone, if I pause the music, I can hear the person without taking the headphones off. I can hear it just fine. Yeah, AJ says, much larger sound stage as well. Um, but yeah, so, so you can hear people as they come in and you can talk to them, which is nice. The other thing is, they are so much more comfortable to wear. I can wear these for eight hours and my, my ears will never really get warm. You think of a decent, you know, you, you get your Sennheiser closed back headphones and you stick them on for an hour and a half. When you take them off, you feel the breeze on your ears and it's like, oh, that's so nice. You don't need that with these. They're, they're just so comfortable to watch for long periods of time. Would collections not be closer to something you can download off Wabberjack for Skyrim? Maybe. I've never tried Wabberjack. I've never tried Wabberjack. So maybe, yes. Did I check at Thoman for Sennheiser? They have the whole catalogue. Uh, no, but I will check, Pete Eric. Thank you very much. What features would your ideal home have? Mm, more bedrooms for the kids. A uh, bigger room for my office so I could do VR without ending up in hospital. Two bathrooms. Three bath. My ideal home, three bathrooms. Uh, no, five bathrooms. Five people in the home, five bathrooms. We're talking about ideal home. Um, yeah, apart from that, I'm good. <laughs> Haven't been able to catch the grounded streams lately. Have we? Has the game stopped making you nauseous yet? Um, yeah, as long as you turn off several features like chromatic aberration, but it still tires me. Grounded is one of those games that tires both me and Che. Our eyes get tired. Um, yeah. Do I have Finlaw during Yule? No. <laughs> no, I do not. Uh, where did Fenelor? Isn't that, isn't that, is that the meat that's like rotting under a stairs for a year or so? Or is that the fish that's in, no, that's Sil. Fenelor. Isn't Fenelor that really revolting meat? I think it's the really revolting meat. Uh, don't think I've even tried it. Um, thank you for explaining. Now you want to try some. Oh, yeah. If, I would highly recommend anyone who's thinking of new headphones, go along to a decent headphone store and ask them. And just say, can I try some? They should have somewhere where you can go and try different headsets. Or I mean, maybe in the main store, but sometimes it can be... But you know what? Even in the main store, it can help. Because then you can listen to your music and you can hear the store sound. And you can get a feel. You can get a feel for what it would be like. Because you think to yourself, yeah, this sounds more like I'm listening to, head to speakers. Um, what are my current open headphones? These are the Sennheiser RS-180s. And they are falling apart. I am now on the sixth or seventh set of the like the foam bits that go over your ears they're actually i gotta tell you the rs 180s feel really really crappy like they feel really low quality they're not they're really good quality but they who's that play a slot available Guyul. thank you very much Guyul to you too for those of you that do not know yule is Norwegian Christmas. Actually, it's not. It's Yule. Um, the Festival of Yule, as I pointed out in my video that... Um, what was that video called? Geralt of Rivia... 
the war on Christmas. Yule is actually a festival that predates Chris Christmas. Um, and uh, a lot of people still even send cards to each other and wish each other Yuletide greetings and things. So technically, Gu Yule is simply just, you know, good Yule. They they never. It's weird. The Nordic countries never actually. They they adopted all the Christmas trappings. Well, not all. Well, I see most of the Christmas trappings are actually the pagan ones anyway. Uh, they adopted the nativity. Um, but they never changed the name. Interesting, really. I wonder. For those of you who've not seen, have you not, those of you who've not seen my, my video, Geralt of Rivia's War on Christmas, please watch it. But if you do, please understand that it, it was, uh, some people just didn't get the fact that it was a joke until way too late. Um, which was odd to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, what, what have we got, Kitty? Yes, it's lamb meat that has been salted and hung out to dry in a shed for a month. That's fear law. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not trying it. <laughs> have I played Witcher 3? This is a Twitch question. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a full playthrough on my channel. Um, loved the game. Consider it one of the greatest games that has ever been made. And in fact, it is what inspired me to make the Geralt of Rivia's War on Christmas video. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we've been an hour and just over an hour and a half now. I am going to go and find out why my son is giggling. Wildly. God knows what's going on in there. Um, they've been decorating the Christmas tree. They've been decorating the Christmas tree. Uh, so <laughs> I'll do a better one. Have you played Skyrim? Ha 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 ha. Welcome, <laughs> Salamagoosh. That is an awesome name. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. Giggling son. Yeah. Big panda on tree. I, I dread to think, I dread to think, Quarico has now announced to the patrons that they can now resume chatting. They've all been, they're supposed to be chatting to me, but I think they've all been carefully avoiding typing in this channel for fear of saying something rude and terrible. So they're probably all in the backers channel. I almost feel like what I want to do now is, is, is go gate crash the backers channel and see what they're talking about. But I probably best not because it might not be safe for work. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this, this, this Christmas Q&A stream, but an especial big thanks to the patrons who really do, you really do make this possible. Thanks again to the subscribers as well. I mean, Twitch, when it comes down to it, Twitch has become a bigger part of the business model than I ever thought it would. Um... I, I mean, I did, I, I still consider my streaming something I do for fun when possible, but it, it, it is now in, 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 in a very real way, a big part of the channel. And, you know, so you, you subscribers, the people donating, people like Zervener, just, just thank you very much. The patrons, you guys, you guys, you know, have been helping me for years now. I couldn't do this without you. I just, I couldn't. The, the money you get on YouTube, just, I, I couldn't, I could not just justify, well, I couldn't actually survive. Uh, so you make this possible. So it is not an empty thank you when I say, when I thank you from the bottom of my heart, you have made yet another year of doing this insanely fun job possible. So a big thank you for that. Um, and uh, hope you'll hang around. For, for yet another year and join me next year when we when we probably ask some of the same questions and uh oh good grief what's that uh maybe i'll have a different avatar maybe i'll have a different avatar i'm sort of working on getting an avatar that's slightly more me although at the moment i got 
well, I get this weird feeling that I've suddenly become a red panda to a lot of people. Which is very odd. However, <laughs> on that note, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next year. So, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Guyul, and Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, whatever festival you enjoy, enjoy it to the max. And I will see you guys next year. Okay, I think I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I pressed a bad button. I pressed a. I did. I pressed a bad button. I pressed a button on my stream deck, and everything went funky. But we're back. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Professional streamer screaming out to the internet. <laughs> How badly did I fail that one? All right, that's just, that's it. That's, that's pretty much, yeah. I'm blaming 2021. Yes, I'm blaming it on the year. It's 2021's fault. Don't blame me. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. M Merry Christmas.